Uh, last night uh, was the event that brings more Americans together in front of the television than any other, which was the Super Bowl, and as always happens, there was a lot of propaganda for corporate America and also a lot of propaganda for the U.S. military. And one of the ads run by the U.S. military, in addition to their flyovers with fighter jets and the like that they do, was an ad that was paying tribute to Pat Tillman, the former NFL star who joined the military right after 9-11. Watch what they showed about him. As athletes, we play a football game, which, you know, times like this, you stop and think about just how not only how good we have it, but what freedoms were allowed. A day after 9-11, Pat Tillman knew he could do more. He gave up his NFL career to join the U.S. Army Rangers and ultimately lost his life in the line of duty. Today, Pat's principles live on in an organization that bears his name and its scholarship recipients who embody his spirit. Like Tillman, Dave Prakash felt compelled Okay, so this is from the Pat Tillman Foundation. It's obviously a noble foundation that's trying to raise money for veterans who are injured or who are killed in the line of duty. But the case of Pat Tillman was an extremely disturbing one because he was extremely important to American propaganda right after 9-11. It was obviously an inspiring story of this football player who had the opportunity to make millions of dollars playing in the NFL to get very wealthy and to pursue celebrity. And instead of that, he sacrificed all of that in order to go fight for his country out of anger over 9-11. That was actually a more common story than people realized the source with whom I worked to be able to report on the NSA, Edward Snowden, had a very similar trajectory. After 9-11, he became convinced that the best way he could devote his life was to fight for the United States or work within the security state. He was someone who came from a family that was lower middle class. His father was in the Coast Guard. He signed up for basic training. He wanted to go fight for the United States in Iraq. He was convinced that was a noble war. Broke both of his legs in, in basic training. Instead, ended up at the CIA and then the NSA. And from there, became very disillusioned, realizing that what the US government had taught him to believe it was doing was the opposite of what it, in fact, was doing, that it wasn't actually directing its power to foreign terrorist organizations, but instead was using its technology to spy on American citizens in mass and became a whistleblower. Something very similar happened to Pat Tillman. While over in Afghanistan, he became very disillusioned about the war and in particular turned against the Iraq war, was opposed to the Iraq war as a betrayal of what he thought he was doing in Afghanistan, namely fighting not against foreign countries that had no involvement in 9-11, but instead which were the ones directly responsible for it. And he became vocal about his opposition to 9-11. And the story that was told about how he died in Afghanistan turned out to be false. The story that was told was that he died in the line of duty as a result of enemy fire. That was the story that was told from the very beginning. And he obviously became a major hero and symbol of the nobility of the war on terror. You may remember a woman by the name of Jessica Lynch, who we were told was somebody caught in a vicious firefight in Iraq. And as she was watching her comrades around her being killed, she fought her way out of a ditch by shooting a bunch of Iraqi insurgents and got her way to safety. That turned out to be completely untrue as well. Both of these stories, these iconographies of America post 9-11 propaganda turned out to be based on a mountain of lies. That was one of the things that was eye-opening for me as a journalist early on when I was, like most Americans, was supportive of the idea that we were going to go and take vengeance upon the people who had attacked us on 9-11, only for the war to quickly morph into something very different. One that, as we just showed you, was based on profiteering, was based on lies, was based on all kinds of different motives. And Pat Tillman was one of the people who started to believe that. Now, I had been reporting on what happened in the Pat Tillman case for a long time. If you go back when I was writing back in Salon in 2007, the headline under which I wrote was the Pat Tillman and Jessica Lynch frauds. There is nothing unusual about these frauds. They are the natural and common byproduct of our political and media institutions. And I referred to House hearings that had taken place where family members of both Pat Tillman and Jessica Lynch 
had been complaining that the stories disseminated about their family members were false. And of course, as usual, the lies were cooked up by the U.S. security state and then fed to gullible media outlets. The Washington Post in particular is the one that ran uncritically the story about Jessica Lynch and how she fight, fought her way out of, out of danger. And she was offended that her personal experience was distorted in this way for propagandists again. So I had been covering this for a long time. And it turned out that the story about Pat, about Pat Tillman and how he was killed itself was actually quite, quite fraudulent. And Pat Tillman's brother, who, like him, ended up going to fight in Afghanistan and also became disillusioned about the war, complained rather vehemently, as did the Tillman family, that they were lied to about how he was killed. It turned out he wasn't killed by enemy fire. He was killed instead by friendly fire, by troops behind him shooting and having those bullets end up buried in his skull. In the investigation to find out what happened, two separate investigations carried out by the Pentagon ended up, according to the Inspector General of the Pentagon, to have been handled extremely corruptly to the point where they ended up affirming a series of events that were clearly untrue. Let me show you the testimony from Pat Tillman's brother before the House in, the in of April of 2007. This is Kevin Tillman, who, as I said, like his brother, went and enlisted and fought in Afghanistan and became disillusioned. Mortal danger, Corporal Tillman illustrated that he would not fail his comrades. His actions are in keeping with the highest standards of the United States Army. This was a narrative that inspired countless Americans, as intended. There was one small problem with the narrative, however. It was utter fiction. The narrative was utter fiction about his brother and what happened to him and how he died. And as he said, it wasn't fiction by accident. It was fiction deliberately in order to give the American people a feel-good story about what we were doing over in Afghanistan and Iraq. And it came at the expense of the truth and about the expense of what really happened to Pat Tillman, something that yesterday's commercial completely obscured by making this feel-good story and this feel-good narrative repeated that he was inspired by 9-11 to go fight for his country and died in the line of duty. Listen to Kevin Tillman's brother continue. The content of the multiple investigations reveal a series of contradictions that strongly suggest deliberate and careful misrepresentations. We appeal to this committee because we believe this narrative was intended to deceive the family, but more importantly, to deceive the American public. Pat's death was clearly the result of fratricide immediately. Revealing that Pat's death was a fratricide would have been yet another political disaster during a month already swollen with political disasters and a brutal truth that the American public would undoubtedly find unacceptable. So the facts needed to be suppressed an alternative narrative had to be constructed. Crucial evidence was destroyed, including Pat's uniform, equipment, and notebook. The autopsy was not done in accordance to regulation, and the field hospital report was falsified. An initial investigation completed with eight to ten days before testimony could be changed or manipulated, and which hit disturbingly close to the mark, disappeared into thin air, and was conveniently replaced by another investigation with more palatable findings. This freshly manufactured narrative was then distributed to the American public. And we believe the strategy had the intended effect. It shifted the focus from the grotesque torture at Abu Ghraib and a downward spiral of an illegal act of aggression to a great American who died a hero's death. So that's some pretty direct and incriminating things he's saying about the government and military he himself went to serve. He's not saying that they, in the fog of war, got the story wrong. He's saying they deliberately lied about what happened to his brother and that the investigations that were carried out by the Pentagon were designed to destroy the evidence. Some, for some reason, to this very day, nobody knows why. Once Pat Tillman was killed, as it turned out by friendly fire, his notebook and his other possessions were burned so that they were unavailable to investigators. This turned out right as it was being emerged that 
Pat Tillman had become, as I said, a critic of U.S. foreign policy, of the Bush, Cheney, and neocon foreign policy approach. He had been reading anti-war tracts, including Noam Chomsky, while in Afghanistan. He had become an outspoken critic of the war in Iraq at a time that the war in Iraq was going very badly. And we have no idea why it was that he ended up being killed by friendly fire or why his possessions were burned and the evidence of what happened deliberately destroyed as part of two separate military investigations. But it's not only his brother who ended up saying that, it's also the inspector general of the Pentagon that was tasked with, with trying to find out what happened. Here you see the inspector general's report of the United States Department of Defense. It's incredibly incriminating. What they said, let me just share it with you since Pat Tillman's image and this story was resurrected on a day that more Americans are sitting in front of their television together watching TV and having their brains injected with information than on any other day. Quote, we concluded that the first two investigations conducted by officers in Corporal Tillman's battalion and regiment under Army Regulation AR-156, quote, procedures for investigating officers and boards of officers were tainted by the failure to preserve evidence, a lack of thoroughness, the failure to pursue logical investigative leads, and conclusions that were open to challenge based on the evidence provided. More significantly, neither investigator visited the site to visually reenact the incident, secure physical evidence, take photographs, or obtain accurate measurements. In addition, the first investigative officer, with advice from his legal advisor, withheld information concerning suspected fratricide from medical examiners who raised questions based on anomalies they discovered during the autopsy. As a result, the first two investigations lacked credibility and contributed to perceptions that Army officials were purposely withholding key information concerning Corporate Tillman's death. Witnesses testified that Corporate Tillman maintained a personal journal and that after his death, unit personnel searched for the journal but failed to locate it. SFC, redacted, and 1SG, redacted, their names were redacted, testified they searched Corporate Tillman's belongings to include his rucksack, duffel bag, and equipment without finding the journal. 1SG further stated that before burning the mole vest and uniform, he put on rubber gloves and went through all of the pockets on the desert camouflage uniform, shirt, and pants and the pouches of the mole vest several times specifically looking for the journal but did not find it. Two other rangers each reported locating a memo pad or notebook and equipment Corporal Tillman was wearing at the time of his death. SSG Redacted, who assisted the CPT, stated he found a small memo pad in the pocket of Colonel Tillman's Ranger body armor vest cover. He described the pad as an olive drab colored field weatherproof memo pad approximately two inches by four inches by one quarter inch thick with light green pages marked with grid lines. He said he did not see a name on the pad and only examined the first few pages, which contained what appeared to be handwritten notes from an operational briefing. SSG stated that because of the operational information in the memo pad, he burned it along with the clothing and Ranger body armor. They burned his journal. Additionally, SFC recalled finding a notebook, pens, and pencils in one of the pouches of Colonel Tillman's molly vest. He testified that he placed the items in a Ziploc bag, which he gave to FSC Redacted. When asked about this, FSC Redacted stated he did not receive those items from FSC and would have remembered such an event, remembered such an event since he had been searching for the journal. We could not resolve the discrepancy in the testimony. So some people have put this together to try and allege that he was deliberately killed to silence an anti-war voice. I don't think the evidence proves that that was the case. But what definitely, definitely happened was that the US military lied, according to the Tillman family, on purpose about what happened so that they could produce a feel-good propaganda story about his death at a time when the Abu Ghraib revelations by Seymour Hersh, by the way, were being divulged and they needed some distraction and having Pat Tillman be this hero who died at enemy fire by the terrorists and by the Taliban and by Al Qaeda was something that served the government's interest, even though it turned out to be completely untrue. There's no question now that he died by enemy fire, by fratricide. And then the army covered up in two separate investigations exactly what happened and there were witnesses who said that they personally burned his journal, the place where he was writing down his ideas and thoughts about the war and the military, among other things.
Thanks for watching this clip from System Update. Catch our full shows for free, live weekdays at 7 p.m. Eastern on Rumble, and join our Locals community at greenwall.locals.com for all of my written journalism, exclusive after-show Q&As, and more.